basic backstory. Meadowfen has recently fallen on hard times. Those who have known the town for years remember its lush fields and routine trade caravans of folks passing in and out of the woods. Recently, however, the rains have not fallen, leaving, feral, leaving fields barren. The trade caravans have all but ceased to pass through, and those that do complain of bandit attacks in growing numbers. A week ago, an ominous plume of black smoke to the north blocked out the sun. A number of militia gathered to investigate, but haven't returned, and the source remains unknown. Okay, so it's it's about like mid morning, you know, not quite noon, say like ten thirty or eleven. Um, each of you are sort of in town doing your own thing, whatever you would be doing at about that time. There is a commotion in the village square. A wounded strig woman limps towards the elder's home, staggering and catching herself on the side of a well. She is bloodied, and her tawny feathers are singed and flecked with ash and soot. Those of you who are familiar with Kara Stormsinger recognize that that's who it is, but she's almost unrecognizable because of just how badly hurt she is. Uh, Chorky runs over to see if he can help in any way. I must speak to the elders. We are all in grave danger. The grove has taken an entire town. And she kind of leans really hard against the well and tries to stand herself back up. Take my shoulder. Which way? Uh, she points Actually, past I you. Probably know. Yeah, she she points past you to a uh, Elder Ardwin's home. Um, she can barely stand on her own at this point, and leaning on you is not a whole lot of help. <laughs> She's pretty big. Yeah, I'm kind of small. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty small. She's pretty big. She's heavily armored. You say they're going to Elder Arduin's house? Yeah. Oh, well, that's where I was chilling out being sad about the rhubarb, so I should probably get my help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so there's a picture of Kara in handouts. Or at least, you know, if she wasn't bloodied to hell. Mm-hmm. So you, you go forward and you kind of help drag her. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, page turn. So, as you're bringing her towards the house, um, an older gallus woman who is sitting on her front porch rises and pulls open her door and gestures for them to come. Uh, you recognize Ardwin, the elder of Meadowfen. Yeah, you guys eventually stumble into uh, the home. Does anyone else want to do anything here? I'm going to find breakfast. <laughs> You're going to find breakfast. <laughs> yes, Kellogg's. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you start to step away, Ardwin waves you down, Scarlet, and gestures for you to come in. And she gives a very pointed look to um, Vel and uh you as well kind of like a you should really come here wanted a croissant <laughs> <laughs> you know you know she makes really good pies <laughs> okay i'll take pie <laughs> <laughs> so i take it that Getting you folks pie. decide to go into the home sure as long as uh, there's pie why not sure okay All right, so other villagers try to follow into the home, but uh, Ardwin kind of shoes them off. It's pretty obvious that she only wanted you guys to come into here and that she wanted to talk to you folks specifically. So she closes the door behind you. Um, and you guys help Kara into a chair within the elder's home and, you know, settles her down. Um, Kara is still bleeding pretty profusely and looks in really bad shape. Uh, Ardwin looks at her and says, It is clear you have endured much, my child. And she motions for everyone to kind of gather around. She goes, But we have to know what happened. Um, she gestures to Kellogg and then gestures again towards the kitchen and says, You know, get some, get her some water if you can. And pie. And pie. <laughs> and pie. <laughs> yeah, 
head off to the kitchen. Okay. You you find like a jug of water and you know several cups. Okay. Is there any pie? There's there's no pie. <laughs> All right. Aww. Grab the. Uh, no yeah, pie. No stuff. croissant. <laughs> no nothing. <laughs> All right, so Kara gulps down some water, um, and she says, The scorched grove, it's growing, Elder. It's spread all the way to Ashbarrow, and... And Ashbarrow is gone. It's completely burned to the ground. And the bandits are taking advantage of everyone fleeing. They either pilfer those running away or recruit those who are angry. Others, they kidnap. I'm lucky I got away. She, like, lifts a wing and looks at, like bent and missing feathers and she's like well barely if you have any questions or if you want to help her out or anything like that why am i here <laughs> so do you, you you just kind of ask that yeah um ardwin like h holds up a hand you know as like a, a peaceful gesture um she says i don't think i have to tell you how serious this is she kind of looks around and you know, her house is full of, like, various trinkets and um, decorations of the people of, of Meadow Fen and Humblewood. And she seems pretty lost in thought for a while. And she kind of comes to and says, you know, Meadow Fen is a home to so many who have nowhere else to go. If Ash Barrow has been taken by the Grove and it's continuing to spread, then we won't have long until we're overrun, too. So I should just leave then. She kind of gives you a pointed look. She says, please, I know of the things you have done before. I beg of you to help us out here. How would I help? Well, some of you are already planning on going to Elderheart. I feel that that journey is much more important now. Speak with the Bird Folk Council and let them know of Ash Barrow's destruction. Remind them of the bandits as well. We've been asking for help for a long time, but no help has come. Was there anyone else that Kara saw besides the bandits and the running people? Um. Or he asked that of Kara, actually. Right. Did you see anyone besides? Not anyone, necessarily, but she just kind of, like, rubs her head and she seems foggy. She goes, there was just, there was so much fire and and smoke, and by the time that we reached the town, it was just completely gone. If I stayed for too much longer, then, you know, the, the fire would have spread and taken us. I was the only one from the group to come back. How can we stop that? Um, this time Ardwin speaks up. She says, The Birdfolk Council has been busy fielding requests for help against the bandits all over Humblewood, but if the Scorched Grove is growing and has overtaken the town of Ash Ashwood, then it's even more imperative that we get their help, or we might be next, and other towns will be next as well. The Grove hasn't grown for centuries, so this is a really bad sign. This is something is... that will require more, is, it is going to be more important for them to pay attention to than the usual bandit raids. Is Alderheart in the same direction as the Scorched Grove? Alderheart is to the east, the Scorched Grove is to the north. Well, I was heading there anyways, I have no problems going to carry a message and let them know what's going on as far as I know which isn't much I was planning to leave this morning anyways I think we should head out immediately sounds like this is coming very quickly and I will follow ew <laughs> um, when did you get here? Steph, I thought I was in there. You are. You are. Uh, Scarlet, <laughs> you're familiar enough with Humblewood that um, the town of Ashbarrow and the Scorched Grove 
If it's overrun, then it's probably blocking all of the easiest routes out of Humblewood and into the rest of um, the world to the west. Is Meadowfin in the northwest it's of It's not going to be easy to get there. <laughs> uh, Meadowfin is in the like the southwest area. Um, you should have a map. Let me pull up a map for... I've seen one, but I, it's in the maps. it'd probably take yeah. me five or ten minutes to find it. It's in the, the maps channel, yeah. And let me uh, see if I've got a map for people. We're going to Marshview? Or we're going to Alderheart? That's Meadowfen. You are looking to head oh, towards Alderheart. I might actually be able to just uh, do this. Okay, yeah, so we're close to Scorched Grove then. And what used to be Ash Barrow. What is this town on the east before you get into the forest? You cut out a little bit, what was that? There's a town um, between Meadowfen and the forest, it's like on the border of the forest, mm -hmm. I can't quite read the name of it. Winnowing Reach. Winnowing Reach, that would be our first, like, stop on the way. Yep. If your setup is like mine, if you click on the map, I think it zooms you in a little bit. Yeah. Right. Um, Fel, you're, you, you travel around quite a bit, so you know Winnowing Reach is like a, a smallish trading town. Um, it's not as hustle and bustle activity as other towns of its size, but it's, you know, it's not a little, a little hamlet like Meadowfen is. You know, there's a, there's a magistrate and there's a jail and, um, you know, there's plenty of traders and whatnot. Anybody's heard any news of here that are Scorched Grove right. bandits whatnot? Yep. Are we just supposed to head out? I'm kind of confused. I'm sorry. That's fine. So if you if your character is interested in heading out, you can speak up and say so. Um, if you have any questions for Kara, the guard, you're familiar with Kara. You you know her pretty well. Um, if you've got any questions for Elder Ardwin, the same thing. Uh, maybe you don't know what to do before you head out. Maybe you have additional questions about the um, what happened to Ash Barrow kind of a thing. You can ask that. Um, I look to Kellogg and say, hi, I'm Chorky. I was ready to head out today anyways. Well, hello. I... Yeah, we should make haste with our travels. Um, but uh, present to make your acquaintance. The rest of us, rest of you will be joining us, I assume. I really don't like to travel in small groups. I was supposed um, to head there with a couple of people today, anyways. Ardwin uh, kind of makes some gestures as he introduces people and says, uh, Kellogg, I know that you only just arrived, so I didn't get a chance to speak with you, but Chorky is not from around here and uh, has come from far in the east to explore, and I thought perhaps heading to Elderheart and having a guide such as yourself would be beneficial to him. And knowing that uh, the roads are as dangerous as they are, I suggested to Vel that she accompany you as to keep you all safe on the road, and she gestures to... Uh, Vel. Vel's wearing some pretty decent armor, so you get the feeling that she's a pretty good fighter. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, do you know of any bandit activity between here and... What's that town? Some, the whatever reach town? Winnowing reach? Win Winnowing reach. Yeah, that one. Are you asking Kara or Ardwin? I'm, a I'm asking the room. Okay. Have I heard any room? Fel, I know? I mean, I've probably been that yeah. way. Yeah, Fel, you're aware of just a general rise in bandit activity kind of across the board. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. kind of been getting worse and worse. So a, a chance of a bandit attack is... it's It wouldn't be unexpected. So a lot of people that have been traveling have been traveling in much larger groups than usual. Okay, fine. If I'm going to go, I got to eat. I can't fight bandits on an empty stomach. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ardwin kind of chuckles and uh, like scurries off to the kitchen. And you hear her kind of clanking around s stuff in the kitchen as she prepares something. Um, let's see. Kara seems to be feeling just a, a little bit better. You know, having some, some fresh water has helped. But she's still, you know, kind of plucking at her feathers and, like, rubbing her wounds and stuff like that. Um, she looks up and says, um... The Banus has just been getting braver and braver in recent times, and I'm not really sure why, but we've been petitioning the, the Bird Folk Council for months now for additional perch guard along the road, but the local militia have had to make do with just what they are. And she looks over to Val and says, We've also been taking to hiring, well, mercenaries is too much of a dirty word, but we've been hiring outside help as well where we can, but the resources are just stretched so thin. <laughs> So, do I, can I, like, ask her, um, if I can help out? Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Um, I'm hesitant to go back to Alderheart, but I know the dangers of bandits. Count me in. <laughs> Ardwin, uh, comes out from the kitchen a little while later, and she's just got, like, a, like, a little bundle um, like a cloth bundle kind of a deal, and it smells really good. Mm -hmm. uh, she's just got like you know some some treats inside, and she offers you know a little bundle to each of you. Um, of just some some baked goods, she says. Unfortunately, these are are canned from last year's crop, so they're not as fresh as I might like. But I think that they will satisfy you all the same. She kind of shakes her head and says the, the crops have not been growing well this year and we're not sure why. Um, but if no one has anything else to ask of either of the two characters, either Ardwin or Kara, um, Ardwin kind of, you know, makes some shooing type gestures and says, you folks had better get going before it gets too late in the day. I'll take kind of catch that. I will take care of Kara here and make sure that she goes well. She does well. Yep, I assume that my character would know, roughly speaking, how far it is to the next town, to Winnowing Reach. Would we be able to get there today, or are we expecting a few days' travels, or what? Uh, you would probably yeah. expect it to take a, a couple of days to get there. Um, but there's plenty of safe sites to either make camp or stay with people along the way. Okay. Okay, let's get going. Uh -oh. uh, and Chorky starts heading out the door. Okay, I guess I'll just go too then. Um, hesitantly, I will. Okay, I'll go. Let's go, Kellogg. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Close the door behind me. Okay. How polite of you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... You folks, um... Head out along your path. Is there any particular, um, what's called a, a marching order? is, you know, if you're walking in a line or if you're walking in a group, who's towards the front of the group and who's towards the back of the group? We colloquially in RPGs call that a marching order. Um, Chorky's rather enthusiastic, so he'd probably be near if not at the front. On the other hand, he has a general idea of things. Would he know specifically where he's going? Um, you wouldn't necessarily know where you, you were going. You've been along the road all of once before. Okay. Know where I'm going. Yeah, you know he, where you're going. He'd probably well, like go with, with you Kellogg a bunch of since he was <laughs> originally told Kellogg was familiar with things anyways. Right. By the way, are we crossing fields or is there a road? There Looking is a road. The map of Meadow Fen, there doesn't seem to be one going to the 
east or northeast, it looks like. Southeast or... The, the roads yeah. are pretty winding. They tend to follow the lay of the land rather than, um, you okay. know, being dug through. Roads are very rarely a straight shot from one place to the other. They kind of bend with the, the hills and the curve of the land. Yep. So we have Chorky would be towards the front of the group. Flora would be towards the front. Where do the rest of you feel comfortable standing amongst your other companions here? I'd probably be somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I'd stick close to the middle. I'll take the back end. All right. Okay. So you guys travel for a couple hours. Um, pretty uneventful, you know, afternoon. If you guys either stop to enjoy your snacks or if you just kind of uh, eat them along the way, they're pretty good. Uh, Ardwin is a pretty good baker, so she made you some uh, some little rhubarb turnovers and stuff like that. Cool. So tasty little treats for the roads. Some daily rations, if you will. Um, however, in the mid-afternoon, you come up to a section of road uh, with a small creek running across it, and as you get closer across the small creek, you see three hooded figures gesturing violently at a crumpled body on the ground, while a fourth is leaning against a nearby tree. A small handcart stacked high with bags and boxes of various sizes stands nearby. One of the hooded figures goes to the cart and unceremoniously sifts through the packages, leaving fallen bundles strewn on the road. As you approach the three strangers who are gesturing at the body, you can see the pointed faces of Mapak under the hoods. Two male and one female Mapak, each, of, each wearing worn leather armor and a short sword on the belt. The fourth, an intimidating Vulpin female, is lightly armored and wears an ornate sword on her hip. She seems to be hanging back, letting her subordinates do all the work. You hear a whimpered, help me, from the creature lying on the road, but you can't make out their features. The Mapak female, still standing near the fallen body, puts her hands on her hips and says to the group, All right, folks, nothing to see. Move along if you know what's good for you.